God, fill us up today. Let us feel you. Let us see you. Let us see the glory that you are. Father, we, we just give you praise and glory. We, we lift up this worship team. We lift up Pastor Mike and, his, and Sister Brenda. They do a mighty job around here, and it's all you, God. It's nothing of, nothing of them. It's you. And we just we humble ourselves to you. We give the day to you, and we just pray that we get wound up and we can exalt the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship his name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy of praise. Come on, give him some praise today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
get that into your heart you find it for a fact you ain't gonna be sitting on your hands no more you can see me see me jump you see me coming up here and dancing I never did that kind of stuff before I sit back there and watch other people and say what's wrong with them why are they doing that why are they screaming and yelling and raising their hands now I know now I know I know why they do that now because Jesus is in their hearts. He's forgiven them. They felt that forgiveness. They feel that joy. They know what it's all about. And that's what he wants for all of us. You don't have to sit there and watch other people rejoice. You can be part of it. Be up here dancing and yelling and screaming and raising your hands and giving God thanks and glory. You can do it too. But you have to receive. You have to receive it through the ear, through your heart, through your spirit, receive the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory God, glory. Hallelujah, bless your name. Receive the rain of God right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's in the healing business. He's in the blessing business. He can turn your life around. He can turn your life around. You may not have come to the altar, but if you have a need, keep your hands raised high right here, right now, and receive because the Holy Spirit is here. God is here. He's here. Jesus, Woo! just receive it, just receive it, oh God, I receive my healing right here, right now, tell him you receive it, tell him you receive it, whatever your need is, that job, that turnaround, that home, whatever it is, God can do it, God can do it, we just have to take time, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We honor you. We honor your presence. We honor you. 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 My God, my God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Oh, won't you say yes to God? Say yes. yes say yes. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Say yes, 
You came here for something, the Lord says. You came for something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God says he's here. Receive it. Ooh, receive it, receive it, receive it right here and right now. My God. Oh, there's an electricity in the atmosphere. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. Mm, you better reach up and receive it now. Hallelujah. I want you to know that your change has come. Your change has come today, says the Lord. Whether or not you receive it is up to you. But your change is here. It's right here, right now. You may not feel it, but that's okay. God is not always about a feeling, but he is about his business. Hey, hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God just wants some time with you. That's all. Hallelujah. God just wants some of your time. You know that? Hallelujah. Mm, when you love somebody, you want to spend time with them, right? That's how God feels about us. He wants a little time with us. Amen? Amen. So because of that, I wanted to talk about applying God's assurance to our life because I was hoping she would be here so that I might be able to minister to her a little bit with the Word of God. Amen. So are you all willing to go through it for her and on her behalf? Amen. So applying God's assurance to our life. You know, sometimes when we hear the Word, it's hard for us to understand it. It's hard for us to comprehend it. Like when the Word says, uh, blessed are you that mourn. Amen. So we're going to look into some of those scriptures. Amen. We're going to look into the scriptures concerning God's assurance. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, how can Christians be assured of the abilities of God concerning their troubles, pain, and anguish? How can we be assured? How can I know that God is who He says He is? How can I be assured that the Word of God is true and there's no lie in it whatsoever? Amen? Well, of course, that's by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Except the man be born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. So you have to be born again. The Bible says that we are born into the world by water. Amen? In other words, the birth comes through the, the woman by water. But the second birth that God intends for us to have is a spiritual birth and he wants us to be what is called born again amen born again of the spirit of the living god and then once we're born again of the spirit of the living god when we start to get into the word of god like we are today into these scriptures they start to make good sense to us amen but we have to be willing to allow god to open up our eyes to see and our ears to hear by the spirit of the living god amen hallelujah so, the Bible offers comfort and guidance to those experiencing loss. Let's look at some of the, reverent, uh, the, some of the relevant uh, scriptures. Amen? Matthew 5, 4. Jesus' statement in Matthew 5, 4, that blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, might seem impossible or difficult. In other words, he said you're blessed while you're mourned. You're, you're comforted when you're mourning. See, those are two opposites of one another. It's like, how can I possibly be comforted when I'm mourning? How can I possibly uh, be blessed when I'm mourning? I lost something. It hurts. Hallelujah. You know, it may seem impossible or difficult to understand because of, uh, of two containing two opposite facts of characteristics. Let's look into a deeper meaning. Amen? There's a spiritual perspective. Jesus is addressing spiritual matters rather than earthly circumstances. When he says blessed, he's not referring to an immediate happiness or lack of sorrow. Instead, he's highlighting the inner condition of the heart. Amen? 
In other words, even though I'm mourning, hallelujah, my God is who He is. He hasn't changed. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen? Though I mourn, though I got that pain down deep inside of me, He's always faithful to me. He's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. Amen? But that pain and that suffering is going to make me realize that I have a need. How many of you know, if you don't go through it, you never know you have a need. Amen? So God allows us to go through some pain. He allows us to go through some suffering. He allows us to go through trouble in order for us to become something better. Amen? You say, well, how can he do that? That's awful, Mike. That's the way he, that's the way he makes me into something? You need to know that we're in a world that is against us and not for us. We are in a fallen world, amen, and God is working in us to do of His good will and pleasure. And whether we know it or not, in the middle of that mourning, in the middle of that pain, in the middle of that separation, God is doing something great for you. And you start to realize, I, I have a need, and you start to draw near to the one who can take care of that need. Who's the one that can take care of that need? His name's Jesus. Amen? So we become to the place where we, we have recognition of our need. Those who mourn recognize their need for God. It's not about feeling good. It's not about acknowledging brokenness, sin, and the following state of, a fallen state of humans. Amen? The broken sin and the fallen state of humanity, we mourn over our spiritual condition. We become open to God's grace and His forgiveness. Amen? If I hadn't felt as empty as I felt, I would have never come to Jesus. Amen? I got empty. I don't know about you guys. But I lived my life to the place where I became absolutely miserable inside. I was so miserable that I did not want to live anymore. I was so miserable, I was ready to end it. I was ready to, I hated this world. I hated everything about it. I hated being in it. I hated everything. And if I hadn't done that, if that hadn't gone on in my life, if I hadn't gone through that trouble, hadn't gone through that pain, I would have never said, if you really are God, you ought to prove it. Amen? But because I went through it, I said to God, if you really are God, you ought to prove it. And guess what? He proved it. Amen? Hallelujah. God wants to give us comfort and restoration. The promise of comfort is significant. Jesus assures us that those who mourn will find solace. This comfort includes forgiveness, peace, Restoration through faith in Him. Amen. There might not be restoration in the world. You might not ever be restored. Amen. To what you're going through. It may be a true loss that's going to be a loss forever. Hallelujah. But God is the restorer. And He is eternal. Amen. He's not, he's not just in this life. Hallelujah. He has a life to come. He has a place prepared for you before the foundation of the world that where He is, there you may be also. Amen? Hallelujah. So you may suffer loss in this world. You know, I've suffered loss in this world before and He's given me seven times more back. Whenever I've trusted Him, whenever I've said, Okay, God, I'm not going to whine. I'm not going to go, Oh, why are you doing this? Why are you acting this way? Why am I going through this trouble? Why am I going through I said, Okay, God, whatever you do, I love you. You do what you do. Hallelujah. I, I believe your word that says I'm blessed in the middle of my morning. I believe you're going to turn my morning into dancing. Hallelujah. And he gave me seven times more than I had before. The enemy attacked and took all of it. And God gave me seven times more back. Come on, somebody ought to shout. He gives us restoration through faith in him. Amen. How many of you have faith today? You know what faith is? Faith is the substance of things for hope for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words... You had faith to believe that you could sit down in that chair and it was not going to fall on the ground. 
Because you, when you sit down, you sit down with authority. Amen? Some of you did in the pew, didn't you? You've sat in it for what? Maybe, maybe it's two years now. We've been over here for two years. Amen. So for two years, you've been sitting down in that. You learned by faith that that chair is not going to fall down when you hit it. And I mean, I can hit it with all 270 pounds. And it ain't going down. Amen. And I believe that by faith. Why? Because I've seen it. I know it works. Amen. So the restoration is through faith in Him. It's not a feeling, emotion, but it's an eternal reality. Amen? Transformation. Mourning leads us to transformation. When we grieve over our sins, when we turn to God, repent, and seek mercy, in that process we experience God's grace and His transformation by His love. Amen? And it works also with all the pain and the struggle and the stuff that we're going through. Amen. Had I not gone through what I've gone through so far, hallelujah, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I went through some stuff, amen, to get where I'm at right now. If, if you knew all the stuff I had to go through in order to be where I am right now, hallelujah. He was working on me years and years ago. He was working on me when I was up in my mother's bed, in my, in my own bedroom, and there was a picture of Jesus on the wall, and his eyes were following me everywhere. Hallelujah. He had been with me, doing things for me ever since I was young. And I've gone through some stuff. Any of you ever had pain? Pain that was so bad you didn't know if you could go on? And you know, God says you're blessed. So being blessed in this context isn't about avoiding pain. It's about finding true comfort and restoration in Christ. It's a paradox because it challenges our worldly understanding of happiness. Ultimately, Jesus invites us to deeper eternal blessedness that transcends our, precious, our present circumstances. Amen. In other words, God says, I got you right where you're at. Amen. I am touched. The Bible says we have a priest forever after the, after the order of Melchizedek and said that that priest is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. You know what that means? He's gone through the same pain you're going through and he knows about it. And he's doing something about it. Amen. He's not just leaving you alone. He's, ta he's doing something about your pain. How many of you know that? Psalms 34, 17. Christian's assurance is attainable. In other words, I have it. I can get it. I don't have to walk around going, I wonder if God is who He is. I don't have to go, man, I don't know for sure if God uh, can do what He says He can do. Amen? The righteous cry and the Lord heareth. And He delivers them out of how many of their troubles? All their troubles. Psalms 34, 17 provides a comforting promise for believers. When the righteous cry out for help. Now we know who the righteous are, right? The righteous are those who have admitted that they're sinners and they become saved by grace through faith and that not of themselves is a free gift of God and they know that God sent a Savior, Jesus, to die for their sins and they've received that work into their heart as their personal Lord and Savior. They are righteous. And when the righteous cry for help, the Lord heal, hears and what does He do? He delivers them from how much of their trouble? All of their trouble. You say, well, I haven't been delivered from all my trouble. Well, see, God is a spirit. And those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen? See, the, the, the deliverance is not necessarily a physical deliverance. I might not be getting a physical deliverance. I may have to pay for something I've done in this life. I might have to go through some things because of some things that have gone on. Uh, in other words, there's some things around me that are surrounding me, and I might have to go through them, but God will give me the ability in the middle of that to have an assurance of Him, hallelujah, that He's delivered me out of all these troubles. 
In other words, I can have a brand new heart in the middle of my prison. I can have a brand new heart in the middle of the process of coming out of being a drug addict. I can have a brand new heart. I can have a brand new soul. I can have a brand new being. I can have joy unspeakable and full of glory in the middle of the process. Amen? I mean, no, it's a process. There's a devil out there. And not only out there, he comes to church. Matter of fact, he comes to church more than he does anywhere else. Do you know that? Hallelujah. But that's okay. What does God say? The righteous cry out for help. Amen. In other words, I've made up my mind that my help doesn't come from me. My source and my strength doesn't come from me. I have nothing in me of any good whatsoever. I have no power. I have no ability. I have nothing in myself at all. But if I cry out to my God because He's made me righteous, He will deliver me. He will set me free. Come on now. Somebody should have shouted about that. Amen. Assurance defined. Christian assurance is the confidence that a believer has in their right standing with God. And the assurance of ultimate salvation. In other words, I have an assurance. Because my God sent Jesus to die for me. Amen. Assured Christians can say with uh, spirit-wrought conviction, not only Christ died for sinners, but also He died for me. Amen? He may have died for you, but what matters is He died for me. Amen? In other words, I'm the one that needs it. I need it more than any of you in here. Hallelujah, that's the way I live. I don't know how you live, but I need a Savior. I need one. I need Him more now than I've ever needed Him before. Amen? I'm getting older. I found out that your bones don't cooperate. Your body don't cooperate. This life becomes harder and rougher and trouble surrounds you. And and people that you think love you don't love you no more. And you go through all kinds of struggle and pain. And, and Jesus says, I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. And not like that um, uh, Motown. I got you. Uh-huh. I used to sing that song all the time when I was a little boy. Amen. Hallelujah. So despite challenges and doubts, genuine Christians can know themselves forgiven, beloved, and bound for heaven. Amen? And you need to add to that. I know that I have been given today the power and the authority over every aspect of the enemy's tactics, everything he brings against me, every weapon that's formed against me. I am mighty and tearing down every spiritual stronghold that's against me. I am powerful and strong. Hallelujah. I am a mighty warrior and there's nothing can stop me. Why? Because my God is who He says He is and I stand on the rock and the rock holds me and the rock made me and the rock shapes me and molds me and He puts in my right hand the Word of the Spirit of the living God in order for me to cut and divide the enemy's tactics and I know that the Lord is greater and mightier than everything that comes against me. Hallelujah! Amen. And that's not because of me. That's because of Him. The Word of God has come in me. The Word of God has come in me by the Spirit of the living God. The Word says to me, I am able. Hallelujah. I don't even tell myself I'm able. I let the Word tell me I'm able. Hallelujah. I can do all things not through me. Psalms 40, uh, 34, 17. The meaning. The verse states, The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. David, the psalmist, knew firsthand that the Lord hears the prayers of those who love him. Amen? 
David, God had come on David and anointed him king before he ever became king. I mean, you know, God sees it done before it's done. And then there's a process. Amen. There was a process to us having a church here today. Amen. God put it in my heart when I first got born again, first got full of the Holy Ghost, first got full of the Spirit, that I was going to have a church. But I had to get to the place where I didn't feel like I was going to have a church. I had to get to the place where I felt like that nothing was going to happen and nothing was ever going to be. And I had to sit in my office and say, Okay, Lord, that's all right with me. Whatever you desire to do, I am in your will and your purpose. Amen? David knew firsthand that the enemy was after him. And yet, what did God do? Because David was full of the Holy Ghost and the power of God, he had had the oil anointed on his head, amen. Uh, His enemies would lay down to sleep and God would deliver his enemies right into his hand. And instead of destroying his enemies, he would leave his enemies laying there and say, that's God's business, not my business. Hallelujah. In other words, he said, you, if they're going to be killed, they're not going to be killed by me. They're going to be killed by God. My God's going to fight my battles for me. I'm not going to fight my own battles. Hallelujah. Although faith in God doesn't make anyone immune from difficulties, God's protection and deliverance is real. David's experience, God's deliverance from Goliath and King Saul. Amen? How many of you know God doesn't love David any more than he does us? God's desire for assurance. God's desire assures uh, for uh, God desires assurance for his people, even the most fragile among them. Hallelujah. He has spoken assurance through promises from a mouth that never lies. Amen? He's just looking for somebody that will believe him. The Bible says that the Lord looks all over the earth. First one person that will believe he is who he says he is. One person that will stand in the gap between him and the earth. Hallelujah. And believe him by faith and let it be released in the midst of the earth. Hallelujah. Anyone that would desire to draw near to him and allow him to be Lord and King and allow him to run their life, he's looking for that individual so that he can show up and show out. How many of you would like to see God show up and show out for you? Draw near to him. I can't believe some people didn't raise their hand. Well, you're going to find out, brothers and sisters. You're going to find out. Hallelujah. You may not think you need it now. Hallelujah. But there's coming a time when you're going to go, Oh, help me, Jesus. Amen. You know, he has spoken assurance through promises from a mouth that never lies. The new covenant in Christ is sure. His promises are true and his character remains unchanging. Therefore, full assurance is possible for everyone in Christ, regardless of the present fears. Regardless of the situation, regardless of what's going on with you, whatever's happened in your life. You know, there may be somebody in your life that's telling you, uh, you ain't worthy, you ain't nothing, you're trash. Amen? There may be somebody that hollers and yells and screams at you all the time and doesn't ever treat you with any kindness the way they should. Amen? I'm assured as a Christian, no matter what anyone else does, no matter what any situation is, i got a Savior that died for me on the cross of Calvary. He's with me. Amen? He's my strength. How many of you like to have some inner strength? I'm not talking about the outside kind. I'm talking about it. it, it, it it's like a, a, a shut up in my bones. You know, uh, I think it was Carmen, the one that's saying, come into this house. Did you all like that rap this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I used to do that for the children's church. Amen. But uh, Carmen used to say, uh, shut up in my bones. 
fire shut up in my bones. Amen? That's what it is. You get God inside of you. You let the Word of God be your source and your strength and your ability. And then you let the Holy Spirit be activating what is inside of you. And before you know it, it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ Jesus that lives in me. The hope of glory. And there's not one person or thing or situation that can stop me anymore. i got to choose to stop myself. And I ain't choosing. I'm going on. I'm pressing on to know my Father. To live each day more like His Son. To let His Spirit live inside me. Forgetting all the lies behind, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. Pressing on. I'm pressing on, pressing on. In the middle of the tears, I'm pressing on. Hallelujah. I'm pressing on. How about you? You know, Christian assurance is attainable. Even when doubts arise, believers can trust that God hears their cries and delivers them from their troubles, just as Psalm 34, 7 assures. Amen? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen? Wow, that went fast. It's already 1045. Amen? Praise God. I'll tell you, I, I so appreciate you all coming to this church and allowing me to preach to you. Amen? Uh, it, it blesses my life. To be able to speak into you. Amen. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone ought to shout to the Lord with all their heart. All their soul. All their strength. All their ability. Hey. Ha, thank you brother. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I, I, you know, I see the, the, the men and, and women in here and the possibilities of what God can do with you is amazing. Hey, man. You might not know it. You know, I told this guy said to me before I came out here, uh, he prophesied and he said, you might know or not know it. He had an accent. You might not know it, Pastor Mike. But God's got something going on. You may not know it, Sheffield Stadium campus people, but God's got something going on. God is doing something. You may not know it, but He's doing it. Amen? So, Father, I thank You for today. I thank You for Your mercies and Your tender kindness. Father, if there's anybody in the room who needs Jesus, I pray that right now they would raise their hand and say, I need a Savior. They would say, I know I ain't right with God, and I need Jesus. Amen? If that's you, raise your hand right now. Amen? I see one hand. Any others? Hallelujah. Any others? There's another hand. Amen? Hallelujah. There's another one right there. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, those that raise your hand, would you say, Jesus, I'm so sorry for my sin. I believe you died on the cross to forgive me of my sin. I confess you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I receive you into my heart. And believe that you are my Savior. I receive you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for this congregation. Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand for those, those souls. I shouldn't be interrupting that. Amen. Because the Bible says in heaven over one soul there's rejoicing. Amen. So, Father, now I thank you so much for 
this congregation. I thank you that you're going to do mighty works in and through and for them. Let them, as they go out of here today or go down to, the, to eat down in the basement, that they just enjoy the power and the presence and the anointing of who you are, Lord. Bless them, Father. Bless our fellowship together today, Lord. Thank you for all of those workers who have prepared and made this service ready. And this time ready for down there where we're going to eat, Lord. Father, they've worked their tail off. But they worked it off for you, God. So we know that you pay back more than anyone else. So thank you for the riches that are in heaven that you're going to give to all these workers that have worked in this church this week. Father, everyone that has tried to help and do what they need to to get the house in order, I thank you for that, Father. Bless them all, Lord. Bless all the workers. Bless the praise team. Bless the musicians. Bless this house, Father. Thank you for the ones who move and in the power and the glory and the majesty of God. Thank you for the prayer time you give us on Sunday morning, Father. Thank you for this church, God. We give you all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone that loves the Lord said, Amen. Amen. You better hug about 25 people around the neck and then carry them downstairs. Amen.